Carla here, uh, also known online as the Beer Babe at Beer Babe. My name is Mike. I am the Robin to Seacoast Beverage Labs Batman. We found on Twitter at Admiral Merritt. Hey, I'm Norman. I'm known online as the Beer Nut or Real Beer Nut on Twitter. Hello, this is uh, Sean Jansen from TwoBeerGuys.com. Brian from Seacoast Beverage Lab, and this is the Seacoast Beverage Lab podcast. All right, here we go. Folks, we are live. What's going on? It's Brian Aldridge from SeacoastBeverageLab.com, and you are in the middle of the Seacoast Beverage Lab podcast, or the beginning, what have you, for September 2nd, Labor Day, 2013. While all of you people are lounging on the couch, watching uh, reruns of, uh, I don't know, Housewives, we're, we've been working we've been working out of this podcast here. So we're looking at episode number 48 for, uh, for September 2nd here, and... Thanks again for watching. If you're watching this live, thanks for chatting. Hop in the chat, and I'm drinking a Notch Pilsner from a can. From the from, from a can, so it's uh, going out pretty good. Thanks for voting. We had 25 votes, and the winner went to the Notch can. So thank you, Carla. What's up? Hey everybody, I am just back from not uh, doing anything productive this weekend. Uh, went up to camp and had had some fun. Um, I'm drinking a Big A uh, from Smutty Nose, Big A IPA. And uh, hi, how's everybody doing? Hanging out. Okay. Norm, Norm, get in there. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were still talking. Uh, mm -hmm. Hey, this is Norman from uh, Metro West Daily News at Real Being on Twitter. And tonight I am enjoying uh, a liter of Paulana Oktoberfest. Nice. We will see it. I think your video is frozen on my end, but hopefully the people live are seeing it. Oh, there you are. Look at that. Look at that, Stein. Hold it up one more time. Look at that thing. That will be finished very soon. Whoa. Yeah, so uh, and we got Sean. What up? Hello, I'm Sean Jansen from TwoBeerGuys.com. I am drinking a pumpkin porter out of your gourd from, from Red Hook. Whoa. Whoa. It is September 1st, so, or past what? September 1st, so I decided mm. to go with the pumpkin beer. Is that a, is that a bomber or a 12? Uh, 12. Oh, nice. Cool. And uh, joining us today to talk about the news is someone that knows a thing or two about news from CNBC, Tom Rotuno. What's going on, Tom? Hey, good to be here, guys. So, uh, what are you drinking? I am breaking out the big can for the big show. You can see this here. It's the Moat Mountain Bone Shaker Brown Ale. Awesome. How's that going down? Good? It's going down pretty well. As Norm knows, everyone loves big cans. Yes, we do. Hey, <laughs> big fan. And, awesome. uh, happy to be here. It's a big fan of the show. Awesome. Well, we're going we're gonna to get right into it, but uh, before we start... Uh, I don't have anything going on this past week. Anyone, I know Norm and Sean were at the Mass Brewers Fest. You want to talk about that for a couple? Sure. Sure. Uh, you want to go first, Sean? Or you want me to? Yeah, sure. Just, you know, I mean, just setting it up. Um, uh, this Friday night, it was the annual Mass Brewers Guild uh, Festival, where all of the members of the Mass Brewers Guild were invited to participate. Um, it's held at the uh, Boston Seaport, kind of same place where they do the American Craft Beer Festival, but upstairs where you wait in, in line and uh, to be able to go in. So it's outside. Um, it's partially undercover. Um, and it's only they only do one session Friday night, and so all the members of the Mass Brewers Guild are there. There was a there was a bunch of new breweries um, at at the festival and a bunch of the old ones. I don't know, Norm, you want to jump in there? Yeah, I mean it was probably the most new breweries in the last couple of years. I mean there's Newburyport, uh, what's it called? Uh, River Battle Walk, Road. Battle Road was there. Nice. Um, Brewmaster Jack. Brewmaster Jack. The new one from Webster that I can't pronounce the name of. It's a uh, like a German sounding name. I can't pronounce it. Uh, they just started up a few weeks ago, basically. I mean, probably about two months ago. Uh, was there? Three was beards. Cool. Three beards was there. The thing I like is that this year, all the breweries got together and brewed a collaboration beer. A basically they did British Mild on cask. Nice. And every brewery got a cask from like from that batch to like add whatever they wanted to. So Mayflower, for example, had the original version, but they also had a s'mores version. Uh, uh, Cambridge Brewing Company did one with Experimental Hops that doesn't even have a name yet. Uh, nice. Harpoon did one with uh, Peppers. Sam Adams did one. They threw a bunch of Utopia soaked oak chips into the beer to let, soak up the Utopia's flavors. Uh, Watch City actually did a s'mores version as well. So every brewery got to do their own different one. So it was kind of cool going to all the different... I think there's 30 breweries total had 30 different versions of the same cask beer so you could 
taste like what their interpretation of what they wanted to add to it. Battle Road did a cool thing. They did a this old brewing method using hot stones to add, like add a caramelization, a caramel taste to it. It came out really well, and wow, I think a lot of uh, cool things there. I tried awesome. that one. That one was good. I also yeah. tried one. Tried one from uh, uh, Three Beards. They did a jalapeno uh, cask beer. How's that? It was pretty good. Cool. And it, I mean, it was a little bit, a little bit different than like the spicy Bohemian. It wasn't. It was, it was very upfront pepper. It wasn't as hot as like uh, um, Ghost Face Killer. <laughs> oh Jesus, yeah. Yeah, Stop. I didn't, I didn't get a chance to try them all, but there was a lot of good beers and. Ran into a lot of people. I think probably Sean did too. That we both probably knew, and it was a good time. Awesome, uh, Carla. Did you get anything, uh, anything crazy last week or beer related? Um, no, not last week. Um, I've been kind of looking forward to. There's a few things going on in September in Portland. Um, I missed a, uh, a fresh hop picking party this weekend. Happened at Rising Tide because um, they're using some uh, local hops in an upcoming beer. Um, and uh, they're going to have one for Sebago actually this upcoming weekend um, to uh, pick a bunch of nice fresh wet hops and get them in there. Um, there's a few events going on at uh, Novare coming up. Uh, Zwanzi Day is coming up too. Um, but over the past uh, the past week, uh, there was not a whole lot I was going on. In cool. Yeah, uh, Tom, did you get anything beer related? I, I mean, in the past couple weeks. Well, uh, I took my son to his first game at Fenway yesterday. Awesome. Oh, cool. So nice. we did, the, did the obligatory stop at the uh, Boston Beer Works <laughs> before going inside and drinking some nine dollar uh, Wachusett's. I saw as I saw a news news report that Fenway's got the most expensive pint out of all the ballparks. I yeah, see. I think it's like sixty cents per ounce or something. Yeah, yeah. So, They're the most expensive everything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they really do. If you look at average ticket prices, everything is the most expensive in the league. Wow. Yeah, it wasn't a cheap day, yeah. but it was fun though. How old's your son? He's five. Well, awesome. sweet. Well, I've still I, never been to a major league game. That's crazy. But you you must have been to the one in Portland, right? Like the, yeah, the minors? Yeah, so yeah, those are fun. That's right there, yeah. I'm, I'm sure those that's are more a lot fun. Cheaper. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you can get tickets <laughs> and seats and all that. Awesome. Well, for those that are watching live, you can head on, or even if you're, you're listening to it or watching it later, head on over to sblpodcast.com. We're doing an all-new show today, um, so head on over there. We got all the links right here. First one's pretty interesting, and it was from a couple weeks ago. A woman tries 100 beers from Shorts Brewing during record-breaking tap takeover. Uh, needless to say, Shorts Brewing Company had a tap takeover at a bar in Michigan, and it started at 11 a.m. And there's one lady that had a sip of every of the 100 beers uh, during that week that Shorts had on. So, uh, is that dedication? Do you count that as tasting all the beers? What do you guys think? Did you see the Did you see the article that's kind of related to that about the the top person on Rate Beer has like something like <laughs> thirty thousand reviews or something? Uh, so, I, knew I, I mean, that. I'm all yeah. I'm all for trying a sip of everything. I think that's fun. But if you're gonna then take that and write you know each one of those up as a review, I would be a little dubious. But I think it's fun. I mean, you yeah. know, isn't it the goal anyways to try as many new things as you can? Like True. that would have been a good time. Yeah, and it's different. Like if you're doing reviews or just trying them, trying right. is kind of cool. If you're doing a review based on even a two ounce sample, I mean, most beers you need at least a few ounces to really appreciate it to see how it changes and things like that to do a full review. But for this right. woman, she just wanted to try the beers. It's cool. I mean, that's why I like yeah. going to like I go to brew pubs and there's like you know 10, 12, 14 beers on tap. I try to get samplers so I can try them all because yeah. it's the only way to have a chance to try them. So yeah, but her her palate had to be wrecked by like. Sample number twenty five. Yeah, <laughs> and she oh, had no, seventy five no. more after that. It was it's it's during. But a it whole was week. all day. No, 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 during a week, week. The week. Oh, long. during a week. It was a I week. Believe so I think right. Yeah, it was a week. That's not that bad if you do uh, it. Yeah, no, that's I mean, not that bad. That's fun. Yeah. Well, then, I, um, and dedication. Even. Let me verify. Let me validate Although, that one. Well, how oh, does, oh, I, oh I think same day. Same day. I yeah, think it's I'm the more same day. There were, oh, okay. I'm think I'm more than impressed that there were a hundred unique beers from one brewer. Right. Like so, that takes right. a lot of freaking work. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Remember, you go to you ever go to a beer festival, Stone? I mean, not Stone, uh, Shorts. And they have tobacco beer. They have coconut beer. They have right. peanut butter and jelly, peanut butter and fluff. They're not exactly the most <laughs> common beers. I think for me right, personally, right. Uh, okay. personally, I'm more impressed with the guy who tried to drink five Ghost Face Killers. A chili beer from Twisted Pine, 
<laughs> in one sitting. I, I'm oh, is that the one with Habanero or... Yeah. Go- Oh, he tried to do it in five it's minutes. Ghost, it's not habanero. I thought it was ghost pepper. It's ghost, yeah, ghost chilies. So um, I wasn't gonna put that in the show notes because it's a bit of an offensive video, but you can, you can find it yourself and uh, do it. But uh, yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. But uh, Tom, you, are you are are you an untapped user for chance? Yes, I am. W- would you would you untap a hundred beers in a day just by just based on sip? Do you have any untapped rules? For no, like when I went up to like you might go to the GABF or like the ACBF. You know, I, I use it for, like, future reference. I might take notes or something, like, write down the stuff I really love. But really, like, one, two ounces, I, I just feel like you can't really tell. And then you can't, you know, like like Sean was saying, you, you hit a certain point where, like, I mean, certain things pop out. But otherwise, it's like your palate's just totally, it's not fair to the beer, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah. Especially, especially if you, you just don't like it, but then it's, you might have got, like, a the last drip of that certain... Whatever you can't judge it, but right, right. plus if you're at a beer festival and you're, I usually try between 25 and 35 beers at a beer festival. You know, two ounce samples. Just to take away from the fun, every single beer, typing up on the phone, uh, on the phone, looking for the beer and everything like that. Go yeah. enjoy yourself. There's people that do that. I mean, long. I have to do, and I just don't. Right. I, I, what I do is I just check. Like you get a, you get a program at most beer festivals. Put a little check next to the beer so you remember. Right. It. right. Yeah, right. that's, a couple that's hours in. And... When I do it, I do it because there isn't a program and it's got some name that I know I'm never, never, never going to remember, so I will <laughs> check in the ones that I've never seen or <laughs> that are hard to spell or whatever. Yeah. You don't do it every single time for every single beer. No, no. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Uh, well, I my guess phone the... would die after 100 beers. I don't oh, have that good. Yeah. I, I think when you, I think when you need like a power source that would just get it from the light. It just turns not sunlight, but anyway, Sean. I guess it's a perfect time to. I mean, since we we've got rolling, we got a couple people in the chat. Ski. Yeah, sure. I'll just give a little uh, a roll call of uh, who's in here right now. Uh, we got a uh, uh, BN Darkside. We got Bruce. Oh, wait, we have uh, Clash seventy seven and uh, Flanderis. Um, uh, some of the folks, or at least uh, Clash. He his uh last weekend he went on a trip to Rock Art and and the Trap Family Brewery along with the Alchemist. Um, nice. There's a bunch of different beers being drank now. Uh, Bruce is having a Notch Session Pills. Uh, being yeah. Dark Sides, enjoying a Iron Mike from Moat Mountain. Cool, nice. Yeah. Big representation. Well, thanks for chatting, guys, and you know, ask any questions or any comments about these articles because we got a couple couple dandies coming up next. And check check out this one. I think Carla might have something to say about this one. And <laughs> I, I'm gonna I'm gonna put her on the soapbox for this one. But oh, fine. Ladies and gentlemen, the very first pumpkin shandy is hitting the shelves. And yes, it's by uh, by Traveler. Curious it's, Traveler, yeah. It's called, yeah, it's called the the, the Jack Go Shanty. So the uh, like the link and the label are in the show notes. What do you guys think about pumpkin shandy? So is that is that lemonade and and pumpkin spice? So a shandy is lemonade and beer. So what I believe they did, and I yeah. could be wrong, is that it's lemonade beer plus pumpkin flavor. Although I mean, a lot of places are doing like you know the big popular one now is grapefruit. So maybe they're just doing like a pumpkin type uh, juice that they make and blend it with the uh, like a pumpkin rattler or something. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen the. I haven't had a chance to try it. I've yet. had it. No. Uh, Sean, Tom, thoughts on pumpkin uh, shandies? I'll give you this. I, I I think the label looks pretty clever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Label's cute. Oh, Tom. I think, that's as, I think that's as far as I'd go with it. So I had it at the uh, at the Kabang, the festival up in Bangor. Oh, nice. Uh, and I was excited to try it because I am kind of a pumpkin geek. I, I like things that are pumpkin flavored. It was a really sugary, sweet, almost artificial pumpkin flavor. Like it tasted kind of like the the pumpkin flavor they stick in your like Starbucks latte. It was too much. It was too sweet, and I I was not a fan. Um, but uh, you know, I the concept I don't object to. Um, I think it was the execution was too sweet for me. Um, but uh, people who love pumpkin flavor may love that. I think Norm, you sent me a, an article today or a, a comment on. Uh, is it from Lou Bryson? A... Oh yeah, Lou Bryson today. He had a, like a good little Facebook rant about um, basically doesn't tear pumpkin, and if you want. To... You want a couple seconds? I can read you good portions of it. Oh, please yeah. do. It. Sure. Yes. Get yes. uh, it. Here it is. I was talking about Southern Tier Punking. I wasn't happy about it. Here's why. 
pumpkin is pumpkin is to my mind one of the two common ways to make a well-made bad beer. The first, a goal, good clean beer that undershoots the goal. IPA is without enough hop character, box without enough body, sour with enough without enough pucker. Any beer that prompts something and then makes you go hunting for it. This subtle and is under delivering. The second, and of course, that this is where pumpkin falls, is flab. Overdoing it. Pumpkin remi reminds me of what the Scots call fudge. It isn't fudge. It's sugar with just enough, just enough caramelization and butter and it to hold into a chunk. But really, it's sugar pumpkin. Pumpkin isn't beer. It's candy. It's like saying you're a coffee drinker when you're, you're really drinking is a Starbucks white mocha with caramel syrup and caramel drizzle, drizzle, drizzle with soy milk to get the extra vanilla flavor. Pumpkin. Pumpkin. It makes Southern Tears creme brulee taste like a lumberjack's beer, manly and tough. It made my teeth ache. I weep to see craft beer folks who are usually drinking double IPAs and big imperial stuff sucking up the pumpkin. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely a, a good... I, I haven't had that... I don't think I've had that beer in a couple of years, so I have to go back and taste it, but... Yeah, it's been a long time for me, too. I remember the first time I tried it, I really enjoyed it. I had it at a beer fest, and I remember I bought a bottle of it, and I finished the bottle, I was like, oh, that wasn't... Like, at first, like, the first few sips, yep. I liked it, and by the end of the bomb, I was like, wow, this is just too much. Then, like, the following year, I bought it again, and I barely could finish it, and I just can't bring myself to buy it anymore. It's just What's the, what's the ABV on it? Because I, I remember it being too boozy for me. It's like around 10, I think. Okay. I think that, I mean, then I can't really do a bummer by myself of a 10%. So. But it's just, it's, just, it's, it's just a sweet, sweet mess of a beer. Sweet tons mess. Of, it's just, like, tons of sweet flavor added to it, a bunch of boozy sweetness to it. And you really get past that like added flavor, you realize it's just not a good beer. Yeah. Uh, Eight point six. Okay, yeah, it's a high. Ooh. Okay, I think it used to be higher. Uh, so Tom, what, uh, what what do you think about uh, I guess pumpkin, just pumpkin shandies in general? The, the concept of having a, a shandy pumpkin beer. I'm a, I'm a fan of the shandy, so if it's done well, all right. I uh, I would not be against that. I just it seems like it would be hard to pull off though. Hmm. Yeah, seems like a, seems like a cold like a cold pumpkin soda. I don't know. And I will, and, and to all the shandy fans out there, I will freely admit I'm not a huge shandy fan. So, yeah. so it may have just been my bias against shandies, but I it was too sweet in my opinion, in my humble. Opinion. I I drink a lot of the same out of porch rocker, and then so I like shandies. Um, I like a couple of Curious Travelers ones, but I'm interested to see how the pumpkin uh, translates. It just doesn't seem like a flavor that is made for a shandy. Yeah, I mean, and you were saying yourself, normally you went to craft a, a beer store and saw tons of pumpkin beers already. So we're, I mean, we're already full effect. So there's no more. There's no more. Oh, yeah. There's no more arguing it. You know, I, it's. I mean, it's, it's out of the horse. I mean, the horse is out of the barn. There's no way you're going back. I mean, there's still going to be more. I mean, some breweries pumpkins aren't even out yet, so you're going to have those still added out there. I'm sure Pumpkinhead's almost sold out anyway, so we can all. Go back to our, our <laughs> beers. So, <laughs> but well, uh, the brewing company just had their third pumpkin slaughter this past weekend. So ooh. they're brewing. They're still brewing. They still haven't released really bottles yet. That's a that's a fun thing to do. Is what they just have people line up there and just smash pumpkins all day? Yep. This weekend was a small one. Only twelve hundred pounds of pumpkin. Oh, okay. I do I do like the pictures of the small brewers that are you know dealing with actual real pumpkin meat um, that come out around this time of year. Usually Portsmouth Brewery posts a, a bunch when they do theirs and or Smutty Nose. You know, it's just got, it's fun to see the legit process instead of the I'm just going to add pumpkin flavor to this. Yeah. Rogue got some so nice, nice PR that. out of that. Yeah. Because you know, posting pictures of their pumpkin patch and saying it's not going to be quite ready until you know beginning of September when there's all these other pumpkin beers hitting the shelves already. Yeah. I like, actually I did a, They actually posted that today. Really? Oh, yeah. cool. Hot off, hot off the press, as it were. I haven't seen any of the presses. I've been, I've been without internet for the past two we'll, days, three days. We'll, we'll get ready for a, a, a news. Uh, we're gonna open a can of, of beer news right now for you because th that that was just like the the appetizer, and obviously it wouldn't be a beer news show without heady topper news, and uh, it's actually a pretty good article that was posted this morning. So this is this is late breaking from uh, Alchemist saying, uh, just basically everyone's asking him to, well, if you can't sell, if you sell it out in hours, why don't you just brew more or expand? And there's a there's a big 
there's a big list of, of, of whys and, and warehouse and, and have bends as to them expanding and uh, there, there's a good couple of bullet points. Uh, one one of the most important ones I thought was hops is because they have a certain contract with a certain certain uh, group that sells them hops. They they only get the amount for the beers that they're going to make, which is already hard to get considering they're getting hops from out west and it's it's hard to, hard enough to get it. So hops is one thing, but they're hoping to work on more contracts for 2015. Um, they want to uh, minimize the environmental impacts just because um, brewing beer. You know, creates a lot of wastewater, so they're trying to figure out how to do it the right way. And uh, they they already have plans to, to build a new structure. It's just about the timing and getting like some final bills uh, approved. But I, I was reading in the chat today. Who just said that? Um, B and Darkside said at 2 p.m. today, Alchemist sold out on a one case limit. So I don't know. Uh, what, what do you guys think about about that? I mean, it's it's good honest answer for an Alchemist. It's it's not like they're hiding from criticism. Yeah, I don't think people realize how expensive it is for a brewery to like expand and get that kind of growth. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I just, like, a couple of weeks ago, I went to Jack's Abbey. They're, make, they're basically going to be paying money until their 50s, and they're younger than almost everyone on this show to pay off their brewery to expand. I mean, it just takes a lot of money to get the infrastructure to expand, and like they said, the contracts and everything like that, it's, just, it's not something you could just only go... We have to expand. Bam, it's done. It takes a lot of, to get into that, and their their whole thing is their market, it's their local place. I mean, they, I, I, trust me, I'd love if they could expand and I can get Heady Topper anytime I wanted, or if they could expand to the point where I can get some of their other beers that they used to brew at the brew pub and yeah. they had at their beer festivals. They were fantastic beers themselves. It wasn't just Heady Topper that was really good, but I mean, there's just limits what breweries can do and what they can do with them space and money they have, and people have to understand that. Yeah, I think this, this might be uh, New England's first um, beer that's that's now sought, sought out, but I, I, I say it every time. I, I think it's, if you can't get that beer, go find, there's tons of other awesome beers out there, and, and just, you know, wait, and the, the beer will come to you. It, it's not, right. and it's, it, it's, I think they said that in the, the end of the article, too, is like, Did it, they say know, that in Wayne's World? Yeah, <laughs> what, what they say, Wayne's World. <laughs> oh, if you build, if you build it, they will come. <laughs> yeah, something like that. But yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of other beers out there, so I hope hope the news that they're not expanding anytime soon doesn't discourage those from drinking any beer at all, because <laughs> that would that'd be horrible. Right, and and to get on my soapbox for a second, being up here in Maine, like I'm really getting sick of everybody just thinking that the only decent beer in New England is Hetty Topper. It's bullshit. Like I love Hetty Topper. It's great. But there are so many great beers in New England and Maine that I just, you all got to get off that little hype train and just kind of check some other stuff out. Let let it be rare. Let it be, yeah. you know, hard to get and a treat when you get it. Like, that's, I don't know. I think the reason why it stood out so much is, one, it came out right when cans were hitting it big. And two, just for so long, it was always West Coast IPAs are so much superior than East Coast IPAs. So suddenly yeah. you had this fantastic double IPA that everyone loved and just hit at the right time with the cans and just being really a phenomenal beer. Uh, Tom, where are you based out of? Uh, Connecticut. I'm out of uh, Richfield, Connecticut. Oh, so, so you're, you're well aware of, of all the hype. I mean, what, what, what are your thoughts on, on some, of the, some of the kind of hype around Hetty Topper itself? You know, or, I think that's like, part of the charm of it. I think it's, it's, you know, it's the story behind the beer and it's the story behind you got the beer. Like, I got it because a guy... You know that a, a coworker drove from Boston, you know, five hours up to get it, and drove, you know, four of them home for me, and that's how I got to taste it, uh, which was great. But that's kind of the mystique to it, I think, is uh, is such a big part of it. But it's cool to see a reason, like well thought out answer, it to remind people that it's just not as easy as saying, "Oh gosh, we're selling a lot, let's make more." I agree, Sean. <laughs> you got me. No, 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 no. Uh, I mean, I, I know Rag Guy is a big Hetty Topper fan. Hell, he brought a couple cases back. Are, are you, are, is, the, is the Jansen House just drunk with Hetty Topper right now? Uh, no, we have it. We would, we would. It's not always our. I have to have a Hetty Topper all the time. You guys I, uh, heard about it. You guys, you guys spread it around, which is good. Spread the love. Big yeah, I think we, I think we shared at least two cases with with people. I mean, it was more so the the price amount of it. It's not. It's not it's not a cheap case, but um, it was better to be able to share it with everybody else so that 
I mean, that's that's the name of the game. And at the same point back, I mean, we got other beers back in chair, which was awesome. So. Yeah, I was gonna say I will. I will say the Hetty, Hetty Topper is good for one thing. For people who don't really, you know, care so much about it, great for trades. One can will get you anything you want from the West Coast. But I, I'm see, not a bit, I'm not a trader. But did you see the trader. beer? The most recent beer advocate, the cartoon they had in there. No. They had so they have a little cartoon all the time, and it's supposed to be I think uh, Greg from Stone and a couple other people. And so they have these two people. They're on a boat, and uh, the boat is full of beer, and the boat's sinking. And they go, "Okay, we only have time to save a couple of bottles. What should I do with it?" And then the guy freaks out and panics. And then they they show them sitting on the desert island. So go. So one of the goes. One of the guy goes to the other guy and goes, "So what did you bring?" And he goes, "Wait, wait. Why are there only eight heady toppers?" And he goes, "Well, I thought we could trade them." So, <laughs> so it was great. That's uh, awesome. <laughs> if, if if you can find that, I'll I'll put it up on the on the old. Yeah, I, I have it with me. Hold on, I go grab. Sweet. Any final thoughts on on the on the on the topper saga? Before we get into another trademark battle. No, well, uh, not that Ryan, but I have the um the graphic from uh. Oh yeah, the the Rogue. Rogue. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if that you can see that in a screen share. So basically, Whoa. uh. It's it's titled. Uh, can you see that, or is it too small? No, yeah, I got it. Black green. Oh, there it is. It says thanks to Mother Nature for ideal pumpkin growing weather this summer. Rogue Farm has picked, roasted, and brewed this year's batch of fresh, a farm fresh pumpkin patch ale. The harvest came three weeks earlier than last year, and the patch of pumpkins produced a bountiful crop that's especially sweet. Ooh, that's good. That's good. I mean, that's a that's a state fair pumpkin right there. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and you wonder why he had yeast in his beard. It's touching yeah. everything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've given a lot of crap to Rogue about all the voodoo donut and all these, uh, like, stunts, like, you know, the book beer and everything like that, but I really enjoy the stuff they're doing with their own farms, the Rogue farm yeah. stuff, the Chateau stuff. They're doing some really good stuff with those beers. Agreed. Let's hop on to the next one. Uh, I we've, we've talked about this, I think, a couple times, uh, this uh, Strange Brew in Massachusetts. is a, it's, a beer and, it's a beer and wine store, right? Home Brew Emporium. Okay, oh, all right, yeah. So I'm, <laughs> there I go mixing the trademarks, so that's my bad. But no, um, they, they, were once, uh, they were once sued out of, uh, from a Colorado-based brewery called Strange Brew. Strange Brewing, yeah. Strange Brewing, and now they're being sued by a brewery called Strange Ways Brewing out of where? Oh, uh, is it not Colorado? But anyway, no, I, I don't know. Well, yeah, the link's right there in the show notes. Strange Ways is, is now going going up against them, so it's kind of like there's a revolving door of people waiting just to sue anyone who has the official rights to, to the term Strange Brew. Uh, Richmond, Virginia. Yeah. Okay, all right. Richmond, Virginia. So what do you guys think? About, I mean, we've talked about this before. I mean, ha- have you guys been to Strange Brew? They actually, yeah, I've been there a couple times. They actually, uh, when I, I used to run a homebrew contest for the Metro West Daily News, and they were actually... The host the second time. Uh, I know Brian, the uh, owner. Uh, I know, I don't know, I haven't talked to him for a while, but from what I understand, he always, he planned on opening a, uh, like a, you know, a nano brewery at the homebrew shop and calling it Strange Brewing Company. So he was very protective of the name. And the whole, you know, everyone knows the story of the first one, that this brewery, Strange Brewing Company, and they challenged the trademark. This the second one. Strange, they strange ways filed a brewery a trademark request, and they basically put a opposition to it. And strange ways filed a suit. Wait a second. I, I think I think I mix it up. It's strange brew that's filing the lawsuit. No, it's strange ways. Okay, so okay, gotcha. Oh, it says strange ways is filing a suit because strange strange brew filed an opposition to their <laughs> trademark. Sounds like who's on first. I mean, I always, I always respect the right of anyone to, uh, to protect a trademark because if you don't, you can lose the trademark. But I don't know how they have a trademark for Strange Brew. Anyways, it's based on a movie. There's at least three different bars I know called Strange Brew. Uh, Strange Ways is different than Strange Brew, and the closest two strange, the closest ones are Strange Brewing and Strange Brew. But I, it seems like a hard trademark to protect. This might be something Tom might know more about from the business side about trademark stuff than. Probably any of us do. Yeah, I, I just, I mean, I agree that I think you have to protect, you have to protect your business, and that's that's what this is at the end of the day. Uh, but I think it always comes down to a judgment call. And here, I don't think, I mean, strange ways versus strange brew. To me, I don't see 
that conflict. You know, I thought the Magic Hat and the uh, the six versus the nine, that whole thing was a lot more interesting than than this one is just kind of, to me, it just seems like kind of a silly lawsuit. Yeah. Um, and then, oh, yeah, uh, The Clash 77 says, uh, don't forget about the Strange Brew uh, beer bar in Manchester, New Hampshire. Mm-hmm. On the on the same topic, isn't there one between an Atlanta, uh, an Atlanta brewery and Dogfish Head at the moment too? Uh, uh, either it was either Terrapin or Sweetwater, I think, over Dogfish Head beer. I haven't heard about that one. I'm looking it up right now just by typing Google, but I got nothing. But uh, and it wasn't we talked to um, was it Foolproof that had something right? Yeah, they had the one with yeah. the winery. Yeah, so. It's, it, it happens more often than we think, but then when there's, I, I'd imagine when it's a, a big, big brewer involved, it'll, it'll, it'll get quote unquote news worthy. It's always funny. I, I think it was, uh, I can't remember if it was on this show or if I read something on Twitter or Facebook about Chris Lauren from Notch was saying it's always the person who's doing their best to protect their own interests, you know, like their own brewery's interests and their own ideas that get made to look like the bad guy. You know, it's like whichever brewery or thing, like, if they if they like try to fight to make sure that hey look we're this brewery not this brewery they're the ones who make get made to look like a bad guy and it really is I mean you should protect your trademark and like I said again I'm not t- commenting on this particular one because like I said strange ways and strange brewing seem kind of uh, far enough apart that it's gonna have you hard but especially like the the whole uh, I always kind of go to location first so. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna think strange ways and go oh but that's the homebrew shop down the street no I know that strange brew I, there's no to me there's no significance in in the word because I I know where this yeah, one is strange brew, if strange brew still has a plan to open a nano brewery by the very definition they're only gonna be distributing very close to their own shop and I'm guessing I don't think we have any breweries from Virginia that make it up to Massachusetts and I'm guessing strange ways might not be the first one uh, so I mean. Yeah. Like yeah, but but there's that always that future theoretical. Yeah. You never know how big you're gonna get it if you don't stop it now. You can't stop it later. I mean, I, I mean, I get it. You know, I don't like when they do cross uh, types of businesses. So like, you know, like a brewery suing a homebrew store or an energy drink, you know, suing yeah. a brewery. Mm-hmm. Like, cause that to me is like, oh come on. You know, there's yeah. there's a difference between having two breweries that have similar, you know. Well, the only way this makes any sense at all for Strange Brew is they still have plans on opening a nano brewery. But I mean, this has been two or three years <coughs> planning and nothing's happened yet. But right. I mean, the only way that really counts is that is the sorry, I cut up. Is if they really still <laughs> plan on opening the nano brewery because the home brew shop really wouldn't right. have and if it hasn't right. been opened yet they, that's that now is the time to put the you know the little two cents in there about like here's what you should not name it yeah. <laughs> I mean to, to, to kind of close it all out we have two two chat comments that, that'll go along with it it's uh first off is Rick Brews aka my dad is in the chat mm-hmm. says uh, can't they all just get along and then <laughs> and, and then being dark side closes it out with it's all very strange <laughs> so uh Wise words from the old from the old chat room, but we're moving on to another one that's just going to make your mind blown. And uh, Tom, w- would you mind uh, taking away with this article? I mean, you hey, you wrote it. I wouldn't want to step on any toes. Not at all. Um, <laughs> we all know it's a tough times for uh, the light beer category, and uh, not only are people not reaching for light beer, they're uh, not reaching for premium light beer, and uh, they're definitely not reaching for Heineken light. Mm. So uh, Heineken, which I thought was interesting they decided that they would actually change the flavor profile which is I think is a good it's a good step in the right direction for them by going with Cascade Hops which is you know Sierra Nevada Pale Ale and um, probably one of the you know one of the most popular hops used in craft beer um, and then they also did the whole we're gonna remarket it we're gonna give a new look to the can and the bottle and um, it's, it's always interesting to me that these companies uh, actually think about when somebody's in a club or a bar like what you know the image that they that they think people want to portray when they're holding the product like it's like a fashion accessory like a like it's a watch or something you know it's um I've never met anybody like that I mean I guess they're out there but um yeah. I, it, it's just like it's like the whole you know with the Bud Light um platinum the blue bottle and the and the black the Bud Black Crown the black bottle they had to yeah. do and yeah 
Um, so yeah, so it's an interesting. It, at least the, I gave him credit for not just changing the outside, trying to be more hip or appeal to, you know, to the to the 21 to 34 year olds who aren't drinking as much much light beer, um, and actually trying to change the taste of it. Right, and and I I completely agree on that point. Is that I give them more credence that they're taking actual feedback about how it tastes, and then sitting there going, okay, maybe we should adjust the recipe. But the, the all the little gimmicks that every all these companies do, including Heineken, that that are just for the cool factor or the external appearance, bothers me because it's about it, fundamentally it's about what you're drinking, right? You know, like at the end of the day, did I like that or not? You know. My my fear with the whole Cascade hops and and uh, Heineken is people that drink Heineken already are gonna just stick to drinking Heineken because hey now it's craft beer I don't have to worry about drinking anything else because this is this is good enough for me because now now it now I'm one of the cool people right <laughs> but I, I'm I'm just nervous they're gonna stick to that because it, and and Tom you you've actually tasted Let it him. so you, you you can't really tell a difference with the two. No, I you know I tried a side by side taste test. It was blind, and and I had you know put had them put in front of me so I wouldn't know which was which, and I couldn't tell which was which was the new one and which did was the they, old one. Did they swap out for a Cascade hop, or did they just add it on top of the current profile? Do you know? It's a good question. good question. I don't know. I mean, I know that they added the cascade in. I don't know what they took out. Okay, because you know you, you can you know add complexity by having different kinds of hops, or you can just you know change the profile by changing out the hop. And I was just curious which. Right. Well, well the other thing that I thought was interesting they were trying to do is, unlike you know the the Bud Black Crown or the Bud Light Platinum, which went higher in alcohol. They yeah. kept the same. I think it's like 3.2 or 3.4. They they kept it low alcohol and it's like 99 calories, and uh, they they're positioning it as instead of something you're going to drink at the end of the day at the end of the night, it's something you can turn to to start out your day or your night and not get wasted after you know three or four. Yeah. So oh it's, but it's great to add like a new ingredient, but you have to add enough of it that people can tell a difference. I mean, what's the use of adding something if no one can tell except the well, actually, well, the, the That's what I'm saying. Of it now, though, it's it, but if that's but if that's it, with, if that's what they're trying to get, is that extra little now with Cascade Hops? It's like Miller uh, but, and that's the other interesting like, part to it, though, apps. is they're not actually going to advertise that they changed the flavor profile. Oh, so that, yeah. So no one's on the wiser yeah. because it, it's like the cereal company saying now with less gluten, but it didn't have any gluten in the first place or something. It's yeah. Right. Interesting, no. <laughs> yeah. So how how are they? Well, so they're not just using that as a gimmick and having it not taste any different. You know, like there's something about that that I actually wait like. till they see this show. Not... Wait till they see this this very show. They're like, maybe we should advertise it. Yeah, I think Harper, right. I mean, uh, Heineken has been better than like a lot of the big mass um, U.S. breweries when it came to that kind of thing. They basically Absolutely. talk about the beer. I mean, I don't like the beer, but they usually talk about the beer more than like all right. the different packaging right. changes. Except for the last couple of years, it's been nothing but green bottles for ever, and they finally added cans a couple of years oh, ago. Sorry. That, perfect time, cans. But uh, shout out uh, to uh, Steel Rail first year. Yeah, but I mean, other than that, I mean, they, they haven't changed the packaging. It's always been about the beer that kind of kind of smells skunk every time you open a bottle, and. Uh, They've been promoting that for years. Well, they also uh, I I forget where um, the guys from uh, IRI told me that it was the 17th ranked, 17th selling light beer. So they got nowhere to go but up. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> How many light beers are there? 17. <laughs> yeah. 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 I wonder where Sam falls on that list. Thoughts? Oh, Sam Light. Sam yeah. something. Did you know the shipyard makes a light beer? They do. Yes. Yep. And then doesn't does uh Wachusett's count as a light? It's a light IPA, but maybe this is not a light anything. Anyway, uh, um, speaking of uh of, of macro breweries, I mean we'll just segue right into this one. I think Sean, you you, you tossed this one up, but want to give it a shout out to the Budweiser ad. Oh no, this was a, this is what on uh, Norm's um. Norm. Yeah, I found the article for you, Norm. With the, with oh, because Norm can't Google it. I was just the I was watching TV and I. Uh, just caught my attention when Budweiser came out with this new commercial, and basically they're trying to promote themselves as you might say we are the your largest local brewery, you know, because they're promoting that they have breweries in all these different you know communities throughout the country, and it just kind of stuck out to me. They're obviously feeling like the pinch of 
at least a little, that noticing like the buy local, drink local, eat local thing. Right. We're trying to capitalize on that thing. Because, right. you know, in theory, there's one in Merrimack, there's St. Louis, there's places everywhere. My my one response to that is bigger does not mean better. It oh, I know. I trust me. I know. I just I, <laughs> I'm not yelling at you. I'm just saying that, that that's my response to that yeah. video. It's like uh, you could be the largest anything. It caught my attention that obviously this is catching their attention and they're trying to get, capitalize on the whole you know local is good market and yeah. it's kind of a uh, different for Anheuser Busch. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've yeah, been... I mean, uh, I wonder if they're going after. They're kind of following in that car manufacturer's suit, uh, it's footsteps, where you know they had all these foreign car makers, and suddenly it was important to buy American, and they pointed out, like, hey, by the way, they're assembling Subarus in South Carolina and Toyotas in you know North Dakota or what you know, like they had to say that you know it's from our backyard. You're not really buying foreign. You're you know promoting American jobs. It's that kind of like. This yeah. is really going on in your backyard. It's not some corporate machine. Is I, I think somebody. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I think that was kind. Of, that's kind. Of, to me, it's an interesting approach. And in that you know, one of the things we love about craft beer is, you know, we love the story behind the brewers, and we know, you know, the names of the people behind it. And I think you look at Bud or Miller as this, you know, faceless kind of place. And if you're in Columbus or you're in, you know, any of these other places where it's brewed, I mean, it, they provide really solid jobs to a lot of people. And that's you know, and, and that's it, it's smart for them to 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 highlight that I think because it could be if you're in one of those towns, it could be your neighbor or somebody you know that works there. Yeah, because what didn't they lose? Like didn't they like lose some of their percentage when they got bought out by uh, Inbev? If I remember correctly, they actually lost a few percentage points towards Is and Miller when they got bought, even though they're a foreign company too. But they're still you know. The whole American thing went out the window when they got bought by this Brazilian European company. Yeah, I mean that's the problem. At the end of the day, they're still that's going to be a hard one to overcome. But they're smart to kind of try and push back on that and say, hey, it's, it's the people, it's your, it's people you know or people in these towns that are that are making this beer. I, I mean, enough said about that. So you, YouTube video is is in the show notes, and it's going to be on every football game you watch for the next ten years. So um, check that out. Um, we have another one. We're going to skip over one on the show notes. We're going to go back to it uh, because Game of Thrones is starting back up. And uh, I'm not a watcher. Anyone, anyone watch the show here? Big no. fan. Oh, oh, nice. So yeah, nice. Uh, have you have you had the first Oma Gang's Beer of Thrones? Uh, beer of Thrones. Oh, I had that. Game beer. of Thrones beer. No, you know, it's funny. I, I went into a couple, uh, two or three different liquor stores, and every single person I asked for it, we're like, no, we're out of it, and they're like, boy, we'll be glad when this is over, <laughs> you know, because all people yeah, after people kept coming in, yeah, and they just didn't have enough of it. Yeah, and Carly, you said you got it. Yeah, I have the first one, um, and it was it was really it was quite good, but it wasn't anything outside of what I expected for uh, Oma Gang. They make some really excellent beer, so I'm not a I'm not a watcher of the show, but um, the I think it was a. Blonde, I think, was the first one. I think so. That was one of like, the more, most boring beers. It was just it wasn't nothing to understand or stood out about it. Classic it norm. I, I enjoyed it, but I enjoyed it, but I didn't. But it was, but I didn't try it for the prestige. I tried it because it was on at Novari, and I hadn't had it for Moma Gang. So I was like, okay, sure, what the hell, I'll try well, it. Uh, I thought it was good. So the next one's coming out soon, though. Yes, right? good, great, great call because we're talking about the second beer and the the Game of Thrones. Tie-in. It's the take the black stout and shiny boy. You got a little uh, image up That's there for fun. us. Look at that. That's a sweet Ooh. label. So for those that are on YouTube, I mean, there's a label that you're gonna see. I think it's out this Monday, or it's it's being released Inspired this Monday. Inspired by the Brotherhoods of the Night's Watch, take the black stout was made to be deep, dark, and complex, like those who have sworn the oath to defend Wisterios against threats from the north. <laughs> So, the label so, depicts the Weirwood tree where Jon Snow recited the oath before, before joining the Night's Watch. I know what I don't know what any of that means. I believe the I Night's Watch, know. Tom. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is 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 the big ice wall separating the the, the villages from the non? Right, right. Nice. I saw one episode, and, the, and that's one of the first things you get. <laughs> so, so yeah, it, it, it debuts next week. I'm a fan. I like stouts. I'll try this one. I, go I like Oma Gang a lot. So. I'm a huge Oma Gang fan, so I'll definitely take it out. So can we all make a pack right now that all of us... And I, I forgot to mention that Mike's not even on the show tonight. 
So Thank all you. of us, <laughs> sorry, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> all of us, including Tom and Mike, we should probably go to uh, Belgian comes to Cooperstown. Uh, yes. So. Yes. I've been trying to go for like years, and nobody would come with me. Yes. Yeah. No, I've really wanted to go the last ever since I heard about it. It just sounds it, awesome. It has. Pro it's probably the best festival I've been to. We to go. That's awesome. Well, I want to go. All right. The little atmosphere and everything. It's just. It's like a gigantic park. It's a lie, right? Bonfires, camping. So we just had it. People bringing like kegs of beer themselves. So like even after the festival's over, we go from tent to tent. And people have beer. Just sharing. It's music, bonfires, good food. Just just a giant party. It really is. Even the the festival is just a small part of the whole experience when you go to it. Yeah. So uh, check that out. And also, if you if you like beer podcasts, which if you listen to this, I hope you do. Uh, the beer sessions radio um, was out there, and they did two two little clips from that from that show. And, and the first clip for about a half an hour talks to um, Bill Herlicka of mm -hmm. uh, of hooks of a uh, hook set of White Birch Brewing. White Birch. So check it out, and it, it's it's always cool to because he's, it's just people that are just coming in and out talking, and it's it's always good to have the brewers there too. But uh, we're gonna press on through a couple more, and then, and then we can kind of close the show out. But um, Big, big growler debates going on uh, out west. Uh, Sean, do you know, any, know a little tidbits about this? Yeah, so, I mean, there's a whole bunch of different laws and discussions that was happening, but the main one that it seems to be maybe passing would be the ability to use any approved vessel for a growler fill. So, and, I mean, approved vessel, at least out in this coast, it's it has to has, have the Surgeon General warning. It's got to have a brand on it. It has to have uh, a, some sort of recognition of what that of what that product is. It looks like what it's going to allow them to do is that if someone, say, had a stone growler and they walked into a different brewery, you could use that same growler, but maybe put a sticker on it or something like that to show what what beer that you're putting on. I mean, it really helps environment-wise. Doesn't you don't have to um, create uh, have more uh, glass out there. Um, uh, and I mean, you can use your favorite growlers. So you don't have to be like me, and I have like a section over here that has like 35 growlers. I know, which is a little bit I'm ridiculous. Out of now. It sucks because it's empty, and you don't, you don't, you don't have to go back to that brewery and just go sit yeah. There. And and if you don't, and you go back to that brewery, you're like, damn, I already paid for it. Why yeah, am I going to buy it out? again? Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of the big pushback, though, is um, I believe um, Russian River and Stone have already said, or at least. I think it was Russian River said we're only using our own growlers, yep. and Stone says it's not a law yet, and oh. we will be waiting until um, it's officially a law before we make a full decision of what we're going to do. Now, it doesn't. This law doesn't affect anything like um, a regular plate, like a, a bar or, or a restaurant or even a package store, to be able to sell growlers of their own draft of just draft beer, um, and it doesn't change any of that stuff. But it's more so based around the vessel that you can use. Hmm. Uh, and I, sorry, go ahead, Carla. I was just gonna say personally, um, I know the brewers' objections to this, but as a person who lives in the middle of a diverse, you know, burgeoning craft beer scene, I would love to just have three sizes of growlers and bring them wherever I want. I don't <laughs> want one for New Hampshire. I don't want one for like I have seven or eight right now, and it's enough. It's That's not really that many. I like it. It's I not. <laughs> I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind steak floor. growlers. Steak what? growlers would be fine. Like I have a growler for. I mean, you have a growler and a main growler. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be fine with that. Uh, but I have, but I have them from all kinds of breweries, and I have to clean. You know, make sure I bring that one back to that. It's annoying. Yeah. I don't like it. Yeah, the thing that caught me about all those links was the one where I guess the full pint wrote, you know, the website the full pint wrote an article about the growl laws, basically explaining it and, you know, saying, like, the brewery was saying yes, but the Russian River said no, and Stone hadn't made the decision. And they had this poll, and apparently Stone took kind of an exception exception to the poll, and they basically did a mock website, basically making fun of the, like, full pint, and then they did their own poll, and then they're basically saying, look, if people know us, we don't just jump into a, uh, out of the blue, just make a decision right after this. And it's, uh, I wasn't sure what to make of that though. If that was like if I that was Greg Cook, kind of who's... and like I didn't think it was great, but they could have done that with their regular blog post instead of going through the effort and basically making fun of this guy who probably not his full time job running full pint. <laughs> I don't know about that. I think it might be their full time job. Oh, 
But I wonder if that was just kind of Greg Cook seeing an opportunity to kind of, you know, it was that whole thing when they did the fake, the bad review, and it was kind of a, a, a PR thing. Yep. And, uh, you know, hey, maybe Greg Cook knows this guy from the full pint and wants to give him a little bit of a shout-out or create some kind of faux controversy that kind of gets people talking. True. It just seemed kind of a silly fight a silly fight to pick. Yeah, I, it was kind of strange. Was, usually but why not also out there day-to-day and how many conversations that they have and whether or not that there was a – if they went to them directly and said, hey, what's your opinion, and then did, did, and did something against that or whatnot, you know what I mean? You never know. There's probably there's a lot more of the. It's like an onion. There's a lot of layers there. Yeah. But um, I remember a uh, big shout out to Rick Bruce in the chat and at Rick Bruce on Twitter. We were I don't know. It m- must have been five six years ago. We were in Qingdao, China. Yes, home of the the Qingdao beer. And there they they don't have growlers there. It's third third world country. But they dads would send their kids with a little Ziploc bag. And they'd walk up to the to the little co- like country shack and they'd fill it with beer, like a little plastic bag, and the kid walks it right back to his house. The second New Hampshire gets like that, I think we're gonna be in we were, you know gonna be in good shape. <laughs> yeah, all, all I need just go get me a pint of beer. I'm just braising chicken. It just but here's like a little sandwich bag. Just have him fill this a little bit. That's all I uh, need. <laughs> well, they used to do it in buckets in the U.S. They used to do it in buckets. They used to be able to go down to the pub, yeah. get a bucket full of beer, bring it home. I want I want buckets of beer, but uh, Norm, final Norm, Tom, Sean, final things before we move on of uh, the, the the growler debates. I, uh, <laughs> I, I I hate like Carla. I mean, I I feel both sides. There should be a happy medium. I mean, I, I know that that our our local brewery all always has to to buy more growlers and growlers and growlers, and so um, just better on the environment if there was much more, something more standard. Yeah, our chat room is lively, by the way. Uh, Sean, with the, I want to say that quote from Dark Side. <laughs> yeah. uh, just going back to the Game of Thrones references, uh, uh, there was a comment that was uh, Game of Thrones in my house is trying to get quiet time in the bathroom. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think that's got to be the uh, definite quote of the night. Definitely. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it. I'm, I, if it could be the show, the show title, I would do it, but it's, it's a bit long. But uh, let's, uh, let's move on to Main Brew Bus. Yes. Make it some so the, moves. The main brew bus out of Portland, Maine, uh, they have announced, and that's uh, that's uh, founded by uh, Zach and Allison Poole. Zach and Allison, hey. They, uh, they announced that they will be keeping their summer schedule, which is five different types of tours on Thursday, Fridays, and Saturdays, um, into the, the fall. They're extending it. Um, they, they were going to go back to a limited uh, tour schedule um, and cut out some of, the, some of the trips, but due to... Popular demand. They are pushing on and um, keeping it going. Awesome. I I gotta say, major props to them. Um, they they have uh, really opened up uh, some of the breweries that are a little bit outside of town. So for people who are visiting uh, Portland, it's a great way to get to see a few things that you can't see just by walking there. Um, uh, there are two uh, beer tour companies in Portland. They both do a fantastic job. So I'm really happy they're there because they're also somebody I can refer people to when they say, oh, I'm only going to be here for two days and I want to see all of Maine beer. And I'm like, good luck with that. Go get somebody to drive you around. It's it's so much better that way. I, I was up at Oxbow with, with Ben Watts, uh, at BM Watts on Twitter, and he uh, we saw the Maine Brew Bus was there. And imagine, t- I mean... Th- how cool is that? Getting on a, the main brew bus, going from Portland all the way up to Newcastle, Maine, for that thing. That's very That's dedicated. Cool. I mean, for, for them just to say, "Hey, we're we're going we're going up there anyway because we want to get growler fills for whatever." And that's pretty cool. Big shout outs to them. So l- the link is in the show notes, obviously, and uh, they're all over Twitter and Facebook. So get on that and recommend your friends to any any and all. Uh, so here's a here's a soapbox for you. Any and all beer bus tours, awesome. It it takes yes. a lot, it, and especially if if we're recommending them because we know what we're talking about, it just takes some. It takes a lot of the weight off our shoulders because we can't take you around everywhere, but they do it for you. So uh, was it the uh, Granite State Growler Tours in New Hampshire doing yeah. big things? Yeah, they're doing great stuff. They stop at Wim every once in a while. Yeah, I mean they mix and it up at Boston they, uh, Beer Tour. Boston Beer Tour. Again, last weekend at Mass 
It's a great idea. I mean, especially when you have cities the size of Portland and Portsmouth where, you know, not everything is in one place. It's it's spread out. It's a great way to see a lot of things in a, in a reasonable amount of time, and you don't have to drive anywhere. How, how, how big are the... Oh, sorry, Norm. No, I was going to say, it's a great way just to have fun. You know, yep. just you don't have to take the responsibility out of it. Yep. Yep. And you uh, know they're going to take you. They're going to... They're going to take you to the best places. So when I go up right. there now, I've been dying to get to Portland, and I'm certainly going to seek one of them out just because I know they're going to take me to the best places. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I mean, and they're beer geeks running it. They're not just like business yes. folk, you know, like trying to make a, a, a buck. They, you know, they, they like it too, which is yes. the only, only the best way to, to, to get a new beer that you haven't had is to have someone that loves it. So, But Absolutely. there's a question in the chat, Carl, I don't know if you know, is how many seats are on the main brew bus? Um, I think they're... 16 to 18, something like that. They're, they're, I think they're under 20. They have one of those like short buses. But it's a shorter bus. It's bright green. It's great. Um, nice. I'm sorry, I don't know the number off the top of my head. Awesome. But it's slightly under 20. Um, nice. So yeah, what's uh, what's all uh, like again? The links in the show notes. I'll, I'm gonna put one in there from uh, Chad at Chada from If My Coaster Could Talk. He he just did a review, and so did Growler Fills actually. So I'll put I'll put both up there. They they talked about the hydro flat flask growler that is being sold online and we we all got one yeah on I didn't line. take one because I can't use it up here oh it's true yeah well, so I, I use mine for water I use, yeah I use it for hiking and water I but anyway it's, it's, during the winter. it's supposed to keep hot things hot for 12 hours and cold things cold for 24 and uh, he has a good review of, of a trial run of water beer and then like leaving it in the car during a during the wiffle ball game that he was at with you so it's pretty cool it's worth checking out the um, and I think that's going to wrap it up. Um, it, so that is a lot of the news. We, there's another article in there about Hill Farmstead, but we, we can leave that for you to, to go to go scavenge and, and find at sblpodcast.com. Um, is and, anyone have any shout-outs? We'll start with Carla. Is there anything going on? Um, sure. Uh, this Wednesday, Gritty McDuff, John Hall, is coming up to uh, do a book signing for his new book, um, which involves all of the uh, great recipes from uh, craft beer places across the U.S. Awesome recipes. I've got a chance to preview the book. Um, it makes me really hungry to read it. Um, so <laughs> it's going to be Wednesday night at Gritty McDuff's in downtown Portland, so come stop by and then check that out. That'll be really cool. Um, and I believe on the 7th of September, um, Sebago Brewing Company is doing a hop picking party at their place. Um, you can find more info about that on Facebook. Um, it's always a ton of fun. You basically bring, wear long sleeve shirts and if they need help physically removing the hops from the vine to the, do one of their local hop beers. Uh, a lot of fun. Um, you drink some beer while you do it. Uh, so if you're around, check that out too. Awesome. Normie. Hey, hey, uh, on? Grilling. You're, you're grilling all week. I grill every single night, but uh, uh, same thing. John Hall is actually going to be in Massachusetts this weekend. Oh, cool. Doing a bunch. Uh, on Friday, he's going to be at the Samuel Adams Brewery signing books. Uh, on Saturday, he's going to be at the Craft Beer Cell in Belmont, Wash City Brewery in uh, Waltham on Sat Sunday, and Trident Booksellers on Monday and Harpoon Brewery on Tuesday. So he's going to be all over the place. And other than that, I'm... Heading out to a new restaurant on Saturday to celebrate my birthday, Bronwyn's in Somerville. It's supposed to be a fantastic German-style restaurant. So yes. looking forward to the half-liter uh, German beers and a bunch of uh, meat. Lots of meat. <laughs> Sean. hey -o. Keep it clean here, kids. Come on. <laughs> parental I, parental I will be, uh, I'll be at the uh, Capital Cup Brewfest in Concord on Saturday. And then traveling down to uh, Norm's birthday soiree. And then on Sunday, um, I'll be finding myself somewhere towards the finish line of the Jimmy Fund Marathon Walk. Um, Amber will be doing that to, um, to cap off her planks and pints and pace um, thing that she's been doing for the last month or so. I guess every five miles, she's going to be trying to do a plank for a minute. And then continue on going and complete the actual marathon. So, and for those that are at home, marathon is 26.2 miles. So even walking that is a bitch. So yes. good luck to Amber on that, and uh, big shout out, big shout outs, big shouts. 
Have a have a beer ready for at the end, cause yeah, I'll have a couple ready. <laughs> nice, <laughs> couple couple of warm cans in your pocket. <laughs> You'll have the hydro flask filled with heady topper for sure. Ooh, that won't last, cause Sean's like, I'll just take one sip, just one sip. Uh, so Tom, I mean, do you have any, you want to give a shout out to anything going on this in the next couple weeks for you? Just the um, one thing I got on my radar is I'm heading to the um, the Harbor Brew Fest in Bridgeport, Connecticut, at the oh, end cool. of. Uh, End of September. Oh, so they really? Do it, when is that? They do it out. It's um. When is the date here? September twenty eighth. Oh, that's funny. I'm gonna be going through Bridgeport on a ferry that day. Maybe I'll come. Come in on, I'll meet you there. Really? That'd be fun. It'd be great. Yeah, they do it at the uh, the minor league ballpark, so it should oh, be. Oh, nice. Uh, my my mom lives on Long Island, so I take the ferry from there across. That's cool. Ah, yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Awesome. So, yeah, it should be good. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. <laughs> No, no, I mean, that's all. I got. That's all I got on my radar. I mean, Connecticut, you know, is in the yeah. last few years the beer scene has really started to grow. So it'll be uh, good to be able to get out and sample some of the local the local stuff. Awesome. There's a really there's a really a uh, top notch cask festival that they do there, right? In Connecticut, once a year. The brew room, I think it's at. Mm. Or oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your favorite brewery in uh, Connecticut right now? Uh, I would have to go with Relic. Is doing some really good stuff. Cool. Um, and they're rather new, right? And they're new, and they're more of a nano. But I, I really like the guy who, uh, Mark Selig, who runs it. Um, he's a, he. Uh, I've met him a few times. It's one of those things where you like the guy behind the beer. Right. Yep. yep. That's cool. Ooh. Well, uh, let's see. What do I got going on? Well, I'll, we have a list of events uh, in the show notes. Uh, there's a big New England homebrew jamboree, November or November. What are we talking about? September sixth and seventh. More info in the show notes to get your tickets. It's awesome. Uh, Earth Eagle guys are there. More importantly, all the homebrewers are there. So there's going to be a lot of different crazy brews going on there. So big shout out to those guys that are going, a couple of which are in the chat, and uh, more info there. I will be going to the Hilltown Brew Fest this weekend in New Salem, Massachusetts, with my dad and my wife. And Is that like put on by WAF? And Momo. What, Hilltown? Uh, oh, Hillman? Uh, I have no idea. I don't see. Man for the Hill Man show. But you will find me, Rick Bruce, and Momo at this festival, and uh, we'll, we'll bring a live report uh, coming the coming the following Monday. And then, like Sean said, Capital Cup Brew Fest is the same day. And Norm, if I knew Sean was going to your your beer fest, I or your beer fest, your birthday, I definitely wouldn't have gone anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, but a, a big happy birthday to Norm, uh, Tom. I really appreciate you coming on, um, and I have all your contacts. In the uh, your Twitter and your your web page link on the show notes. Uh, any other any other place we can reach you? Fantastic. No, that's it. Happy to fill in. Happy to you know fill in on a holiday. We'll see you. We'll see you at uh, you know Thanksgiving and Christmas. I'll be back. You know. Excellent. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, I'm here for hey, you. And don't forget your on Hanukkah. And then uh, so absolutely. <laughs> and a quick quick update on the schedule. We uh, next week we have um, Chris from Newburyport Brewing Company. Just chimed in this morning. Said he's gonna he's gonna fill in a spot for us next week. I've seen him like four times. I've harassed him and said, so, "Why'd you why'd you bail out on us?" Bail, total bail. But we I mean we'll get to that next week. But and then but the following week, get ready for this drum roll. Sean, hit it. <laughs> Episode number fifty coming up. We have uh, Chris Shea from Henniker joining us for for the fiftieth episode of the podcast. And then on the twenty third, we have Josh Bernstein, author. Of uh, many books, including one that's coming out that Norma has already read. And yeah, you don't. The complete you beer do not have the guests listed for the thirtieth. Oh, is that official though? That's official. Oh, drop it right now then. Uh, the folks from Cigar City in Tampa, Florida, will be visiting us on the thirtieth. Hey. So we're we're going to Florida. We're going to Tallahassee. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to Vermont. <laughs> so, all right. So that's gonna do it for the podcast. <laughs> Thank you. So that's gonna do it for the episode number forty-eight of the podcast, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Most importantly, tell a friend to subscribe. SBLpodcast.com. Tom, thanks again for joining, and we want to give you a big cheers to keep writing about beer and and uh, being a big beer lover. So, thank you. Cheers. Thanks, thanks guys. Anytime. Cheers. Thanks, Tom.